obviously not uh, Didier Reinders, um, I'm still Enrique Velázquez, um, but I would, like, I would like now to move on to the closing remarks of, of our, con well, the closing remarks I think technically is what I will be doing afterwards, but the closing keynote of the conference. And uh, in order to do that, we are very honored to have here with us the presence of uh, Mr. Didier Reinders, that is uh, the European Commissioner for Justice. And as you may know, particularly the ones that are more uh, involved with public affairs, is the top decision maker uh, on some of the things that we have discussed uh, here at the conference, for example, consumer credit. After he speaks, we'll move to very uh, quick closing remarks, and then you're free to go. But if I may, please now, uh, Commissioner Reinders, if you could just join me here. Thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So the name is correct now, maybe also on the screen. Uh, and thank you very much, Mr. Velasquez, for your kind invitation to such a conference in a building that I know very well because I was in charge also for the finance department many years ago in my home country, so here. And I should have been uh, here uh, two years ago when uh, you invited me to the 2020 uh, edition of your annual conference. But of course, with the COVID-19, we have uh, worked many uh, meetings uh, by video and uh, it was uh, needed to wait. And in the meantime, of course, our world um, has changed and the pandemic has had a considerable impact on um, everyone's life, but has also made the vulnerable uh, more exposed. And as you uh, may know, one of my priorities as Justice uh, Commissioner is to protect the more vulnerable members of our society, including the financially vulnerable consumers. Because I'm in charge for the consumer policy also at the uh, European level, and I'm happy to be here to share my reflections on how to empower consumers and ensure their access to responsible credits. Uh, I think we share common goals, that is very clear. Uh, as organizations managing data to assess consumers' credit worthiness, you seek to avoid over indebtedness and situations in which uh, people cannot repay uh, the money they have borrowed. This was also part of our thinking behind the new consumer agenda. We tried to ask to the member states to align a national consumer agenda on the open agenda. It's not all the time the case, but uh, in many different national dialogue, we try to do that. And our new consumer agenda adopted in 2020, so with uh, this new uh, a commission, the mandate of this new commission, is designed to empower consumers in the two transitions that we are working on, the green and the digital transition. Uh, it addresses questions of consumer protection and consumer resilience, especially, I said, after the COVID pandemic. And you know that we have seen more and more sales online, but more and more activities online in different ways, and certainly in the financial uh, sector. And we try to organize, if I may, all the time the same protection online and offline. And to be more complete, to try to have the same kind of legal framework online and offline. Uh, and we will see after the pandemic that uh, it will be the same in the near future. We'll have more and more uh, operations online in comparison with was the situation before the pandemic. And this uh, European agenda contains 22 concrete actions with all the measures available to us. As that means there are legislative proposals, of course, like the revision and updating of the Consumer Credit Directive, which I will speak about uh, in a moment, and the Distance Marketing of Financial Services Directive. At the same time, we are supporting member states in the transposition of legislation. For instance, uh, the Directive on Representative Actions that we have adopted during uh, uh, the Croatian presidency at the beginning of the mandate of this commission. And now we are in the last moment for the transposition to organize cross-border collective redress uh, in advantage to the, the consumers. And then we strengthen the capacity of national authorities to tackle illegal online commercial practices through innovative e-tools. We also provide funding 
for example, to enhance the av availability and quality of debt advice services in the member states. We try to have debt advice services in all the member states with the same level of quality if it's possible. Of the 22 actions set out in the new consumer agenda, 10 were already delivered. Nine actions are being carried out as we speak, and the last three are set to start soon. My focus today will be not on the 22, I assure you, but on one of those actions, the Consumer Credit Directive, which I know is of interest to you and you have discussed already today, I'm sure. Uh, digitalization has, of course, changed the way financial services are marketed and sold to consumers. At the moment, households are suffering the effects of an increase in food and energy prices. They are still feeling the effects of the COVID pandemic, and now the war in Ukraine has made the situation even worse. I worry about families turning to credit, getting over in debt, and uh, falling victim to irresponsible lending practices in the EU. And we have seen a lot of new practices uh, online since, uh, I will say, some months, because it's increasing uh, during the last months and certainly during the pandemic. This is why the Commission proposal to revise the Consumer Credit Directive aims at better protecting consumers taking out consumer credit, which is all the more important in the current context. It aims to respond to the challenges of digitalization and the impact of COVID-19 on the credit market and on consumers, especially, again, the most vulnerable. And we also aim to improve the competitiveness of the internal market. One key element of the proposal is the credit worthiness assessment. In line with the jurisprudence of the Court of Justice in Luxembourg, the proposal aims to strengthen responsible lending requirements. The proposal sets out rules obliging creditors to carry out a credit worthiness assessment. The assessment, this assessment must take into account the consumer's interest and only be based on necessary and proportionate information on financial and economic circumstances to prevent over indebtedness. And you know, it's the same reference to the same principles all the time in the different decisions of the Court of Justice to verify the necessity and the proportionality of the different measures taken, and certainly in such a way uh, to uh, exchange data about uh, such a kind of uh, assessment. The terminology was chosen to mirror the mortgage credit directive, which also provides rules on credit worthiness assessment. Our intention is to ensure that only necessary data I said is processed this is in line with the principles of the General Data Protection Regulation, namely data minimization, purpose limitation, and the general principle, again, of proportionality, in fact, in line with the GDPR. For example, health data, such as the cancer status of the credit applicant, is usually irrelevant for a creditor when processing a request for a small loan. The Commission proposal also requires that credit be offered where the result of the credit worthiness assessments indicates that the obligations of the credit agreement are likely to be met in the manner that agreement required. But it allows in specific and well-justified circumstances that the credit can exceptionally be made available to the consumer even if these obligations are not likely to be met. We attach particular attention to this point for the ongoing discussions between the co-legislators about the proposal. And you know that we are working all the time with trilogues with the Parliament and the Council. I want to inform you that yesterday, to give an example, we have uh, reached uh, a success because it was possible to agree on the prolongation of the digital COVID certificate that you are using maybe on your smartphone for one year. You need to travel, you will use again such a kind of certificate. But so here we are starting also the discussions with the parliament on one side and the council on the other side. And the processing of a consumer's financial data should be done in a way that is open and transparent, especially when profiling or automated 
decision making is part of the outcome. That is why the Commission proposal widens the rules set out in the GDPR to cover cases when automated processing, including profiling, is used for the creditworthiness assessment. In this case, consumers have the right to request and receive human intervention on the part of the creditor and a meaningful explanation of the assessment of creditworthiness. They should be able to express their views and to contest the creditworthiness assessment. When it comes to the balance of data protection and data innovation, it is essential to keep in mind that personal data is a fundamental right the revision of the Consumer Credit Directive conforms with the General Data Protection Regulation, which is flexible enough to ensure sound protection of data and at the same time allow innovation in the sector. In addition, it is important to ensure that innovative systems using artificial technology also put people first. This is essential to build trust in the system. Therefore, the Commission adopted the Artificial Intelligence Act proposal to strengthen the safety and fundamental rights compliance of this technology. This is of relevance to the guiding principles of your industry, seeking, among others, to avoid causing or perpetuating credit discrimination. We are also looking at proposing targeted and risk-based rules on liability in the second half of this year. Regarding progress of digital literacy and skills, the digital space has enabled data sharing to be faster and on an unprecedented scale. Data sharing mechanism in the credit market could contribute significantly to improving the risk profile of borrowers. Therefore, data sharing can intimately prevent over indebtedness. Even so, Data sharing is subject to the legal safeguards imposed by the GDPR, and consumers taking out consumer credit should be protected through this legal framework. To enable consumers to better understand the credit agreement they are entering into, the proposal provides for disclosure of the information in stages. Hence, the consumer will receive information gradually first general information, then pre-contractual information, and finally, of course, contractual information. At the pre-contractual stage, the proposal introduces a, standard, a standardized uh, European consumer credit overview. So the SECO will have a common approach with the same information in the pre-contractual stage for all the consumers. On one page, the information summarizes the key features of the credit to ensure that consumers see all essential information at a glance, even on the screen of a smartphone, and not to have to sweep from one page to another one maybe 30 times before to have all the information. And so with such a, a kind of standardized European consumer credit overview, so the SECO, it will be possible to provide the necessary information in a very simple way to the consumer. Often, people taking out a credit agreement don't really understand what they are signing, and we are hoping that it will be better with such a simplified uh, mechanism. So we have introduced the idea of adequate explanations to in the Consumer Credit Directive. Creditors will have to explain the proposed credit agreements adequately to the consumers. This will enable consumers to assess whether the proposed agreement is adapt to their needs and financial situation. The Commission proposal also contains financial education measures to improve consumer understanding of the credit products they want to purchase. And finally, to support consumers in financial difficulties are already over in debt. The proposal ensures that debt advisory services that I've mentioned at the beginning are made available at national level and we insist to do that in all the different member states in the same way. Debt advisory services offer the personalized assistance of independent professional operators who are not creditors, credit intermediaries, or credit services. This targets consumers who experience or might experience difficulties in meeting their financial commitments. 
and it may include legal counseling, money and debt management, as well as social and psychological assistance. The proposal was, till now, favorably received in the Council and in the Parliament, and as I said, the Council uh, and the Parliament will start the trailer after a new step. The Council has reached a general approach, so the Council has fixed its position, and the Parliament is expected to reach a position soon. And, of course, we will uh, continue to work in the trilogue uh, very soon, and we try to, to go fast in the conclusion on this. So I conclude with such a positive note that it's possible maybe uh, to start the discussions with the two co-legislators. I want just to say that it's also in your interest to try to work with such a kind of legal framework, because when you are looking to uh, the situation online and the situation in many sectors now, it's more and more a question of trust. And we need to build a real trust between the consumers and the operators. I know that uh, it's not possible for all the consumers maybe to understand in detail what is uh, the content of the different proposal, but to try to simplify the way to do that. And again, to try to build or to rebuild a real trust uh, from the consumers and the different uh, financial operators. And when I'm looking to the uh, situation in the member states in the last months, I'm sure that we have seen an increasing of a mistrust between many consumers and different kinds of, of operators, because we have seen an increasing of fraud, of abuse, and new actors with new methods. And so we are counting us on you to take part in such a process to try to uh, have a better approach online, that, like we try since many years to have the same kind of uh, uh, the best possible approach offline. But again, uh, we are working for better trust between the consumers and the financial operators. I'm hoping that you will, it will be possible for you uh, to take part in such a process. Thank you very much for this opportunity to explain to you what we are doing. And thanks for your discussions today about such a, a project, a proposal, uh, the new uh, Consumer Credit Directive with the revision that we are trying to organize. Thank you.